<laughs> Azra Becevic Sharenkafa from uh, the National Museum of Bosnia and Herzegovina, who was uh, a participant in the Reorg Southeast Europe project. And we're very, very pleased to have her with us this week. Uh, her assistance uh, with the project, with the hands-on part, was priceless. Uh, she had just done this a few months ago, and so it was really great to have someone who had gone through the process in such a short time frame uh, with us. So thank you very much. Thank you for not pronouncing my surname like correctly. And uh, I will have a really difficult task actually to put two presentation in uh, like time for, for one. So I will be quite fast and we'll have a little movie. And uh, to begin with, I would like to thank my team, team from the Southeast Europe, I'm New York Southeast Europe, to giving me the opportunity to present what we did here in Canada and also CCI and I from providing me like plane tickets and hotels to be here, <laughs> but otherwise I couldn't be able to do that. And this is a little picture of um, Europe, and we are somewhere down. And there was like, uh, we start to work, uh, we had like 10 days workshop, which is, was really different approach from what we did here, but it's completely, I mean, we had another options. So we were there like from 15 to 20, 25th of October, and we worked at the railway museum in Belgrade, which is a completely different story than we have here. It was like lots of big bulky objects. <laughs> and uh, we were, uh, we came from six different countries, 40 participants together with two girls from the railway museum. We have 13 museums all together, and one ICROM consultant working with us for these 10 days together with lectures and Gail and everyone else. And this was this ex actually building where we worked in. And uh, when we came in, we just like start to explore and do. And according to the York methodology, we got just one out of the 11 criteria of the professional storage, which was really like bad. We just got we had just have a person in charge and nothing else. <laughs> so it was it was really really bad when we came. But uh, we got a chance to work in this little yellow corner like storage area. And it was really difficult to get in because our corridors were really narrow, full of everything, collection, non-collection, rubbish, everything was there. And the uh, storage looked like this, which was really disaster, if I can say. Especially because textile object, objects were just like hanged around the shelves and the flags, which are really important. And me as textile conservators, I was really, <laughs> like, <laughs> really, like I didn't like that too much, but we managed to move it. And uh, Simon already just said about all this, a uh, different uh, process which we get gone through, so I will not going to go like over again, so I will be quicker here. And we worked in uh, like four uh, phases of organization method, and we actually went through all of them during the, these 10 days. Uh, so when we get started, we have big smiles, and we have them <laughs> like for 10 days. Uh, we were really dirty and everything, but we were really proud of what we did at the end. So this was us and me with different hair color, but anyway. <laughs> and uh, this is, we started like free, with three day lectures, just actually to us about importance of the collections, management, and to buildings, furniture, equipment, because we were all from different kind of museums, different backgrounds, so we just, I think that was a really good time to remind us about the importance of all these steps. And when we came to the museum, we have really big space, uh, to have it as our working space, and we like set up. We have two strong guys moving on, like these heavy objects, because everything in railway museum is really heavy. I mean, we have all these old rails, models. It was really heavy, so we get them to move things around. We also lay out. We have like space for tools and equipment and everything what we need. So it was really easy to bring things back. If you need brush, you take it, and when you're finished with that, you just put it on the space, which was just saved for it so everyone could find everything what they need in, in each moment. And we also have one box for the lost and found things, which is really nice because we found everything what you forget, like glasses, umbrellas, everything. So, And we had a lecture room, we were lecture room, and we also have like chilling space, which was much bigger than in Brandt Museum, but anyway. <laughs> that was like at the beginning, later on we just filled it up with the, with the objects, so it was a bit more difficult. And we start uh, as a group from, of 14 or 15 people from all around Southeast Europe. And after actually one or two days, we, can't, we become really team and actually friends all, all together and we are in touch all the time and just 
try asking for help or questions, whatever we have. And uh, we were, just a second, yeah, and after we done this creation of the team, we went to the condition survey of the collection and the storage where we were in and try, just try to see what we have. And we were split in four groups uh, with different col uh, color codes. So we just, we, and each of us had different tasks. So it was easy just to don't bump to each other. We all have different tasks. So we just report that at the end of the day so we all know what's going on. And uh, this was situation in the storage room where we are. There were these like gray things were like fixed <coughs> shelvings or different kind of units. And everything in the middle was just like collection, non-collection, rubbish, everything inside. And you'll see what we did at the end. And uh, this is like when we start to see how many objects we have in different collections. And we work together with curator on that. And at the end, we have like most of the collection was technical. We also have historic one and applied art, which really like small amount, small amount of uh, objects. Uh, something which you also did during the uh, survey of the, of the storage area is actually just to see how much percentage of the floor occupation, and it was 39%, so it was like not enough, we could do more and better. Just picture of how that looked like. I mean, you saw that on movie, but just to see how we actually uh, just to organize space and it's really, now it's easy and now people can, I mean, curators who work there can really find objects which they need like in three minutes, which is kind of standard. And uh, at the beginning we have 39% of the occupation of the floor and after we add some more units we have 48, which is quite nice. So, and we are able to actually move objects inside. <laughs> and uh, we also find uh, solutions for these extra heavy or extra big objects. And we add some new furniture units and we adopt existing ones just to adding some shelves or something just to, to have objects, not have objects on the floor, but have them on the shelves. And also something what we did with small objects because we have like some small parts of something, we put them in the plastic boxes or we made some, some costumes, custom boxes for messy free tissues, uh, cardboard, so we can really place them and they will be on one space, they will not be like leaking around. And we also did a localization system according to uh, ICRA methodology. And now it's really easy and we just went through and just write down what, what is in which shelf and you know they really can find everything what they need. And something what we also did is to buy them like vacuum cleaners so now they will have something to clean up in, uh, clean in, the, in the storage area and we also put leathers because without them you just can't do anything. So. And uh, after we finish our organization in, in the railway museum, we actually follow uh, nine out of 11, uh, 11, 11 um, what do you say? <laughs> the criteria of the professional storage for, I think this was really good what we achieved in, in these 10 days. And actually we worked, uh, direction of the project was like, we had like seven days, we have more than here, but uh, we had actually same, we have three days on actual working and, and moving object. And Simon did for us these two days <laughs> in one night, so I think, like planning what to do and how to do it. So it's kind of like what, what we did in these. And we have like three days of lectures. And something what we did at the end is we have public presenta presentation, we have lots of ministries of everyone from the government coming in, and we have also journalists who really spread word what we, what we were actually doing and what, what, what is our plan. And it's like, thank you for, <laughs> for financial support. And see, we, have, we still have like smiles around our face at the last <laughs> day. So it was really great. And I get opportunity to get dirty twice, so it's, it's great opportunity. <laughs> And uh, now we are in phase two, which is the uh, distance mentoring phase. And we have uh, 14 participants from six countries and from 13 museums, and actually 14 museums. And we are like working together with our mentors, trying to set up action plan, condition survey. I mean, we already did it. And now we are in kind of implementation phase because we have to finish our workshops by June 2015. You have more time than we are, but anyway. And uh, now I will move to a problem which I have in my museum. And I'm working at the National Museum of Bosnia-Herzegovina, uh, the technology department. And I will show you like what we have actually in our agricultural co collection, which was uh, neglected, neglected for some time because we didn't have a curator who was taking care of it. So everything is just like, you will see that. It's not very nice. Other collections are in like good state, but this one is not. And this is uh, where I work again, so this is museum. <laughs> and this is established on 1st of February 1888. And it's really, like, so almost like 130 years old. And we have like different, okay, this is moved, but anyway. 
Uh, we have four departments or four units, natural history department, archaeology, library, and ethnology department, where we're working in and where storage is inside. And we have our permanent exhibition in this building. And these are just some pictures of the museum inside, exhibition which we have in natural history and archaeology department, and we also have botanical garden in the, in, in the middle of the, these four, in the courtyard, actually, of the museum, so it's really nice. And these are pictures of our permanent exhibition, and uh, everything is nice and shiny here, but down in the basement it's not so nice. <laughs> so I'll just show you what's happening in, and something which we have problem, and I'm not sure are you aware or not, that museum is closed for two and a half years for public because we don't have foundings. We are supposed to be state institution, but politics and everything else in my country is really too complicated, so we don't have funding for salaries for the last three years. Of course, with that, we don't have foundings for anything like to do in collections, so we are just, just doing some really necessary, you know, something what we can do without financing, and also, but I mean, I'm trying to find and I'm getting some finds you know, some, some ways to found our storage area and just try to find someone who will make us shelves or who will help with this or that. So I think that we are, we are getting there, but generally in Bosnia, museum is closed at the moment. And uh, something which we have as really old institution uh, in, in this area, we have like uh, collections are really well organized and collection inside uh, ethnology department, we have 80,000, yeah, 80, 18,000 objects, and they are spread in different collections, and like each collection has their separate like uh, space within the museum, and they are mostly organized, a couple of them are not very well organized, and this one was really, like because during the war we have to move everything out, we bring it back, we did some renovation, we take it out, we put it back, so we really have problem with uh, placing everything on the right spot, but I'm doing that at the moment. And something which we also have problem is that we have 15%, more than 50, around 15% of the collections are really extra large objects which are over 50 kilograms and really need two or three person to carry them. And they are more than one meter, 1.2 meter wide or, or long, so you really have to need, you need space for them. And um, some specific problems which has to be solved in, in my museum are to find adequate space for the collections. Adopt shelves, mobile plat you know, make mobile platforms, fixing at the wall just to to have more space to work in. Uh, we also have to adapt existing furniture to the collections and try to get some more, or just borrow them from the because we have like some shelves just lying around and they're not connected, so we have to do that. I have to organize work and something which is the most difficult task is actually motivate staff at this mo at this moment because. Because they didn't have salaries, they just don't want to work. But I get curator and I just have a couple of colleagues which are really willing to, to, to help and to do that. And I also have like some students and volunteers who will come in and help. And it's a different type of like volunteering here and in Bosnia, you know, there are two different types of people there. So I will see what I can do. And according to Reorg methodology, we actually we are quite good, I think. We got we follow like six six out of eleven criteria, which is not bad, but we want to improve it, of course, and I still didn't improve anything, I'll do that. And according to self-evaluation before a workshop, we are kind of in the middle. We, he, we need small improvements somewhere, we need bigger somewhere else, but I want to be in green, green part, I mean, to have all our things in the green part, but I think that I will manage to do that, but together with my colleagues, which I'm working with. And uh, four phases of reorganization, I'm just like, again, I'm like uh, working with a curator for agricultural collection on these like first first three phases, just in the office where it's more warm because we can't go into storage room because it's really too cold at the moment because we don't have he heating like last three years and it just, it's just freezing downstairs. So we're just like trying to get through pictures, just going there for a month, for a month, coming back, just try to like, to have it all done. And sometimes in April, May, when weather is nicer, we'll go in and actually do our uh, organization of the storage. Uh, as I said, I already like start to motivate stuff and they're quite happy to do that, to make something, you know, to change something. And I also, I find volunteers because I'm also like teaching at university, so my students will like to help. So I hope that I will get them after they finish exams <laughs> to, to help. And uh, something which is, I think, really important and something which we 
uh, partially done in, in, but it was okay if you're doing with the mu museum professionals, but just if we have people coming from the outside of the museum, we need to educate, educate them about the importance of the collections, because this collection is like, uh, we didn't get any new items for last, I think, 30 years, and we have all this like wooden objects and something which was used in, in, in rural areas for years, and we just get them, so we didn't get any new one, so we just have to and there is no new one. I mean, old ones because everything was like destroyed. So we really have to take care of that. And I have to educate people about reorg methodology, type of the objects, and something which is really important is handling, moving, and packing, and protecting objects, which is really important for object-wise. Uh, and this is stayed in my storage or in, in agriculture storage, which is not really nice. But I have these really big heavy objects which are just lying down and it's a uh, quite big problem to get somewhere, uh, you know, for example, these slides are just next to the shelf where I have like objects and I just get in and I can't get in to, to get them. So now we are planning like what to do. And we also have some unused shelves. I mean, you have objects on the floor, but they're not placed where they should be. But we are like in process of moving that. Um, as uh, management wise, we have storage department, we have like storage room, working room, office. Uh, we have responsible creator for co collections now in the last couple of years, but previously we didn't have them, but we don't have like strict, uh, strict restrictions who can get to the storage or not because it's in a basement and it's open area and if you lock up doors, uh, we have like microclimate and really high humidity, so we have to keep doors open, but usually nobody's getting, you know, it's just like for staff, so we are like struggling, but uh, again, they're really big, heavy objects and they're not very nice, so we are not too afraid that someone will take them. <laughs> I mean, nobody doesn't want to like shuffle or something. I mean, they can buy that. So uh, we have rules for storage department, but they're not always like applied. And the uh, storage room, when museum is open, it's clean once a month. Now it's like, it's rarely because nobody's getting in, but from time to time we had that sweeping and, and mopping up the floor. And all objects in that storage are registered and they have inventory number. And uh, that for all objects in my museum, we all have like, inventory numbers and uh, something what we start to do is like to put labels on each object with inventory number, type of the object and actually location where it, where it is at the moment. So if we take them out for a search or something, we just, we are able to put them back. We still don't have like this um, mapping system as we are supposed to do, but we'll do that. Like just to, to, uh, to just number shelves and, 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 and cupboards in right order, but we'll do that in the end of the, this, uh, uh, this, this method after we did, it, did everything. And something about like building that we uh, actually storage where we are, we have three connected room in the rooms in the basement. And total area of the storage is 199 square meters, but it's separated in three different rooms. And something which is really a problem, especially if you have these big objects that uh, uh, ceiling is like two, two, 220 high. So I think for Simone, it would be really impossible to work there. For me, it's okay, I'm like small, so I'm not bumping into all these pipes and stuff, but it's quite difficult to get uh, objects in and out. And uh, in each room, we have a window, and uh, in two big rooms, we have also a floor plan now. We have like, the windows are blocked by the air conditioning units, which are not used, but they are here, and we can't move them, and we also have problem. Uh, except we have problems on the floor and as well on the on the ceilings because we hold this like pipes running around and, and something so that's kind of problem and uh, we have heating pipes attached to the ceiling of the storage and in the last 18 years since I'm working in the museum we didn't have any kind of leaks or anything so they are okay now but just they're just on their way and we also have movement sensors connected to, uh, to the security company so if anyone is in storage out of the office days, you know, they will, they will come. But sometimes you have problems with spiders or something, you know, <laughs> when they can climb up there, they start to scream. So we are having like regular inspection but security company coming in and out. And this is floor plan of our storage rooms. And these are actually, this green one, are, uh, where actual storage is at the moment. But um, I convinced the curator to give us, one, another one to give us half of that room, which is about 20 square meters. So we have, and that room is much better because we have like, I think, maybe two and a half to three meters wide ceiling, so it'll be easier to put some objects inside. 
And uh, I have a really nice chart of the spread of the collection which we have, but I, I think that I deleted. <laughs> but here we have just one with the uh, like, type of the materials, uh, materials which you have in collection. And it's actually mostly organic. It's mostly like wood and some ropes and stuff. And it's like 80% of the collection is organic and 20% is metal. So it's just, you know, it's kind of difficult to care about, especially if you have problems with humidity and with gro mold growth and everything else, and insects, so we are just we are keeping it at eye, eye all the time on that, so, but still we don't have problems. And this is as present as its situation, which we have, and we have like, uh, what is what, and these green uh, wooden shelves, which are just there, and we can't move them, and they are not, we have to adapt them, because there are some really too high, I mean, too high shelves, so we just, you know, space is not used as it should be. And uh, these green here are actually objects which are on the floor on actually down pallets and down some foams, but still they are there and you really can't reach at them. I mean, you can say, okay, this is it, but if you want to take that out, you really have to move everything. So I'm now trying to find solution for that. And this bit here is just objects piled. Curator start to work and he never finished that. <laughs> so it's just, I mean, that part of the, of the collections, but I don't know. <laughs> we have to sort it out. And something what we are planning actually to do is uh, to put, we have in the museum one, one you know, like shelf, which we'll put in, the, in that storage. So we can put, it's not, it's like, uh, it's narrow on, 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 on the, on the up, up, up part and it's a little bit wider down so we can really fit boxes with objects, smaller objects inside so they will be there and marked properly. And uh, for some bigger objects, we can put downstairs. We can really reorganize that. And something what we plan to do, this air conditioning has to be here, so I can't move them. But with this purple one, we planned to put for these big objects, such as like slides or something, which are really like, I don't know, two meters wide and one meter, I mean, they're really big. So we just put, uh, plan to put them like uh, platforms on wheels so we can really move them. If we need space to access shelf at the back, we just, have, we just can move that so we can access that. And something we're to also plan to do, like kind of platforms on wheels with perforated uh, bottom for the like rakes and shovels and stuff because they're all, I don't know, maybe so pictures they're all like lying on the on the shelves and they're really, I mean you can't find them but if you have them standing you will be able to find them and they will be protected because they will be not uh, just stretching on each other. And something which I also to plan to put that on the wheels so we can just take them out and we can use space efficiently. And these uh, like light green should be platforms on like two levels for these like, uh, try to find, plow is the name for what we have. You know, something where the like agriculture do. So, you know, that big, long, not too heavy, but if we have them like in two layers, we can have, we can just have them there and I just left some space so we can take this thing on the on the shell and on the roll, you know, on, on the wheels out, take object, okay, <laughs> and something what is a, a present situation that we have 19% of the floor occupation at the moment, and we are trying like to improve it. And with these, I think shelves and units, we'll have 37%, which is okay. I think uh, if you consider type of the collections and, and size of the object, so and something what we have or don't have in the museum is that we have sufficient lighting, we have fire extinguisher, we have trolley, we don't have ladders, but we don't need them. I mean, even I can just reach everything, so. And we don't have uh, cleaning materials really just for that room. We have cleaning materials for everything, but not just for this room, so we have to think about that. And our future plan is uh, to try, try to find volunteers and students who are re really ready to spend some time in, in reorganizing of storage area. And I think that I can manage to do that because I saw like twice that we can do all the, if we planned properly, we can do actual moving objects in and out in three days or four days. And I think that everyone in, in Sarajevo is, I mean, not everyone, but some people are really ready to spend three or four days just doing that and have something behind them. So I think, and I hope really that I will get them. And the something what we have to do is to build more shelves and also get some uh, <coughs> like positive thinking from the, some builders which are coming to do something in the museum. I was just so showing them what we have to do and I tell them, just put that in, you know, it's, you know, we don't need so much money and he told me, okay, we can do that for free. So I think it's really great. So finally I will get some shelves as well. So I think, I mean, some people are really like, I don't know, caring about the museum. 
And uh, something what we will do, yeah, make platforms on wheels for the for on wheels for extra heavy objects, so we can just move them, and uh, make this appropriate fixing for the long object. And something which is really important, I mean, we can do all of that, but something what we want, like all of us, or in place of the museums, to open museum for public again. And I hope that we'll do that, like I don't know, in a couple of months or at least during this year, so everyone could come and enjoy what we have in the museum. So that's it, actually. And I was on time, kind of. <laughs> Questions? <laughs> Thank you very much, Azra. Okay. Two, two very impressive uh, projects, and uh, <laughs> you have uh, a lot of work to do, but I yeah. think... Yeah. yeah, but I will finish that. Yeah. <laughs> do we have any questions for Azra? Yes. <laughs> just, uh, just wait for the mic, please. Thank you. Could you say your name and uh, where you're from? Um, Megan Briggs, Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport. Um, I noticed in the pictures that a lot of the participants um, from from the first part okay. uh, were wearing dust masks and yeah. protective clothing. Was that really necessary? Yeah, there? it was really yeah. necessary because everything in that storage was really dusty, moldy. We have like a whole collection of bags, like uh, conductors' bags, leather mm -hmm. ones, which are. But complete, instead of being black, they were really white and full of mold, so okay. it was really necessary to <laughs> protect ourselves. And okay. they just pack them all like, in bags, just close them and bring them to the conservation. And, but everything else was really, really uh, dusty and dirty because actually nobody was, I mean, they have curator, but there is no <coughs> exhibition which was going on all the time, so they just kept everything there and everything right. was really, I don't know. Okay. You really so need protective equipment. In the phases um, section, like when you're building your team and things, that would be, health and safety would be a consideration yeah. as part yeah, of that of course, then. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Has, your, <coughs> has your museum undergone a deaccessioning process to make room for um, more artifacts? Uh, no. <laughs> no, no, because like, um, like curator, I mean, museum is really like, if I understand well, like uh, um, it, we have problem. When museum was like established, uh, th this is actually I didn't say that at the beginning, but national museum. Uh, do you think about national museum or railway? Sorry, did I'm you sorry? think about railway museum or national museum? Well, uh, both. Um, both. I'm not sure for railway, but like at national museum was established in 1888, and curators were there all the time and they were collecting actually really a specific type of the objects connecting to the certain re regions of the Bosnia and Herzegovina. So as every other museum, when the museum was built, and that is like first museum in Southeast Europe which was built to be a museum, it's not adopted from old house or hospital or whatever, they planned like areas for storage, for office, for exhibitions, but now we are like ru running out of space. But uh, we got just like unique objects from the certain, I mean, for certain region, so there is not so much what we can just like this session and just like throw it away if you think that. So, no, the reason I'm asking is that sometimes uh, a collection policy is is created, and then sometimes museums have collected uh, many objects that that uh, don't currently fit that policy, and so there's a possibility of of deaccessioning objects that may be. Uh, um, you know, repeated or maybe not necessary um, for that. Uh, but I, again, I don't know if that's... Yeah, I'm not, I, I think that they're like just really, they collect just what is actually needed. To, I mean, if you have something too much, you're, you're just buying that or not collecting that. But it's just, I don't know, I think that we have like, everything is there because it has to be there. But my big dream is actually to have like extra building to put all surges inside with perfect conditions and... I still have like 20, 30 years to do that, so I think I will manage. <laughs> I mean, it's just because you really need all these objects, especially like after everything what's happened in, the, in, in Bosnia and in this region of Southeast Europe. Like during the war, we were really happy that, I'm not sure that any objects were destroyed during the war and it was like on the first line of the, of the, of the, of the battle. And we are really happy to have them because uh, most of the these rural areas were objects were collected from, they are destroyed completely and they changed completely and there is no, you don't have a space to go and do research again. I mean, I don't know, can you understand? I mean, here we have like subtle situation, but 
up in Southeast Europe, it's really difficult. You just can't go to, I don't know, to village and do research how people use to, I don't know, dye some fabrics or how to produce that because there is no people who are doing that anymore and there is no evidence of it. So everything what we have is in our museum. So that's the reason why we are like keeping everything. Simonette Sion with the Ontario Heritage Trust. Um, with respect to the question about the accessioning, um, I think that if you're doing a storage uh, reorganization or project, that the, the storage project should come first prior to actually deaccessioning, because especially if you're not sure about exactly what it is you've collected over, over the course yeah. of several years and the possibility of war and all sorts of things like that. Yeah. So to me, the deaccessioning process is perhaps maybe a step that would happen after, 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 yeah. Because that in itself becomes, um, there's a lot of planning that's also involved in that. And it would probably become a lot easier now that the storage is actually <coughs> organized. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Especially like, like in this collection, especially agriculture, there is no, we didn't get any object in the last, I think, 25, 30 years. We didn't have any new object, I mean, new accession object. So it's really like everything is really like from this. I don't know, like end of 19th century, beginning of 20th, so, I don't know. Okay, at all? Okay. Thank you very much, uh, thank you very much, Azra.